So how can you use Emphasis Animation's Interticulate Storyline to direct your learner's attention and create even more engaging interactions? Well, I'll show you how to do that in this video. So stick around. Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, as you might know, I've, I've always been a big fan of using animations to create meaningful visual communications in my e-learning and video-based content. And you know, when we look at what's possible in a tool like Articulate Storyline, animations can go far beyond simply having something enter or exit off the screen. By using emphasis animations, you can direct the attention of your learners or make interactive objects, well, more interactive. <laughs> So let me show you how. So here I am in Articulate Storyline, where I've been working on this project where I want to add some emphasis animations. And, you know, we can find all of our animations in Storyline under the Animations tab up here in the ribbon. And there's several different types of animations we can add to our projects. We have entrance and exit animations, and of course we have motion paths. But here in the middle, this is where we can add emphasis animations. And there's a lot of different things we can do with emphasis animations. We can use them to subtly direct the attention of our learners or highlight interactive objects, and we can even combine Find multiple emphasis, anima emphasis animations to create some unique interactions. So for this first example, I have this slide here with some audio narration uh, outlining some objectives for this new employee onboarding course. And I want to use a simple pulsing emphasis animation to emphasize and highlight each of these learning objectives as it's mentioned or as they're mentioned in the audio narration. So to add an emphasis animation, I'm just gonna go ahead and click here on this object. It's a grouped object. And you'll notice here in the ribbon in our animations tab, we can add an emphasis animation. So I'll click here and we have a couple of different animations we can choose from. We can do a pulse, we can do a grow, a shrink, a shake and a teeter. So you can play with all of these on your end. In this case, I just want something that subtly highlights this group of objects for our learning objectives. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a pulse animation. Now, the way emphasis animations work uh, is very similar to the way motion paths work in Storyline. If you've ever played around with motion paths, you know that in order to control a motion path, you actually do it with triggers um, to control what happens. And the reason why is because in Storyline, what's cool about emphasis animations is that you can trigger an emphasis animation based on interactivity, which we'll see here in a moment. So I've gone ahead and added this pulse um, emphasis animation to that first a set of objects for the learning objective here. And you'll notice that we have a trigger here. It says emphasize item one using pulse when learner clicks item one. We're gonna edit all of that here in a moment. Let's do the same thing for our core values. Add an emphasis animation, we'll have that pulse. And then meeting the team, we can click on it here. We will add a pulse animation to that as well. All right, so we've added our emphasis animation. It's pretty simple. Now, in this particular instance, I want the emphasis animations to happen at a particular time in the timeline uh, as it's synced up with my audio narration. So I have this audio narration down here, and I've gone ahead and added these cue points to my timeline to indicate when I want each one to be emphasized. So all we need to do is edit our triggers here in our triggers panel to adjust that. So we're gonna say emphasize item one using the pulse when, and in this case, we're gonna do when timeline reaches, and I could do time, but in this case, I'll do a cue point. I'm a big fan of using cue points. Cue point one, all right, easy peasy. Do the same thing with number two, emphasize item two using pulse when timeline reaches. And we're gonna do cue point number two. And same thing with our third one, emphasize item three when timeline reaches. Cue point number, oh, it came out of order there. Cue point number three. All right, so that was pretty easy. Now let's preview it and see what it looks like. Welcome to this new employee onboarding course, where you'll explore how to make your first 90 days a success, how our core values align with our work, and how to get up and running with the team. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right, pretty simple. So you can see the pulse there, simple little emphasis animation to direct the attention of our learners. So that's one simple, really simple use case for using emphasis animations uh, in Storyline. So I'm going to close out of this preview. Let's look at the next example of how you can use emphasis animations. And in this case, to emphasize interactive objects. So here's our next slide where we're talking about the first 90, di first 90 days of onboarding into a new job. And we have this simple click to reveal interaction here where we have this graph with these clickable items and 
uh, they reveal a series of uh, information here in the middle. What would be really, really cool is if I could animate these to grow and shrink depending on how I interact with them. And of course, you know, there are ways that people can do that with uh, states and, you know, you can change the way uh, objects such as buttons look with states. But in this case, I really want to create a, a really unique uh, interaction where they grow and shrink as I hover over them. So in this case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to click on this first item here this first clickable item, and I'm going to add an emphasis animation. And in this case, I think I'm going to do a grow animation. So I'll go ahead and click grow here. And we add that here. It says emphasize item one using grow when user clicks item one. In this case, I'm going to do it when the learner hovers over it. So it's going to treat it almost like a hover state, but it already has a hover state built into it. You'll see that here. If I click on the item, there are some states built into it. But in addition to that, now it's going to grow and shrink, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that trigger, emphasize item one using grow when user hovers mouse over item one. And you'll notice here there's a little option here in the trigger. If I open this trigger up, we can take a look at it. And it'll restore to original size when the user hovers out. So that's pretty cool. Let me do that with number two and number three, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to add an emphasis animation. We'll do a grow and same thing. Emphasize item two when user's mouse hovers over item two. And in this case, I'll do number three as well. And of course, you know, you can do the rest of them on your own, or you can at least imagine that, right? Grow. Let me find that here. When mouse hovers over item three. Easy peasy. Now let's preview what those look like. All right, so we have our click to reveal interaction here. And let's see what happens when I hover over number one. See how it grows? And if I mouse away from it, it shrinks back down. Same thing with two and three. So it creates this really nice, neat little effect here. And if I click on it, the states still work with it. It just grows and shrinks. Click on number two and then number three. And of course, I could use a series of selected states to keep it large if I wanted to. So that's a really simple example of using Emphasis Center animations to emphasize interactive objects. I'm going to show you one more example, and this is going to combine all of these techniques. One of the cool things that you can do with Emphasis Animations is that you can actually combine multiple Emphasis Animations that get triggered based off of all sorts of different events. So if I come down to this interaction here, I have this uh, simple little drag and drop interaction. And this is where I think emphasis animations really shine when you can combine multiple emphasis animations to create unique drag and drop interactions. So on this slide, let's imagine I want to create a series of emphasis animations where these draggable items grow and shrink depending on how I'm interacting with them. But I would also love them to maybe shake or teeter depending on which one of these drop targets I drop it on to give sort of visual feedback to the learner, right? So let's go ahead and start with this first draggable item. I'm going to start with some of the simple stuff. I'm going to add the growing and the shrinking to it. So I'm going to add an emphasis animation. And we're going to go ahead and start with a grow animation. And we're going to emphasize drag item one using grow when, in this case, we're going to do when mouse hovers over drag item one. Okay, and we're going to restore it to original size when user hovers out. I think that makes sense. You'll see how that works here in a moment. And we're going to add another emphasis animation. This is where we're adding multiple emphasis animations now. And in this case, I think I'm going to have it shake. You'll see it added a second emphasis animation. And we have some different effect options as well. I can change how much it shakes. I can make it low, medium, high. Uh, and then depending on which emphasis animation you choose, some of these options might be slightly different. In this case, I'm going to make it do a high shake, so it's really, really obvious. All right, we're going to do emphasize drag one using the grow when user hovers over it. We got that. Emphasize drag one using shake. And this is where we're going to control it based off of what the learner drops it on. So we're going to do when user, and we're going to come down here, when object is dropped on, okay, when drag item one is dropped on what? We're going to say the last three. If it's dragged and dropped on any of those, it's wrong. But if it goes on the first one, then it's right, right? All right, so we're going to do drop target two, three, and four, all right? And let's see, make sure it did that. Very good. Click OK. Now let's preview and see what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and preview the slide here. All right, so here's our draggable item. It does the growing and shrinking, which is good. And what I like about the growing and shrinking is the the growth of it, if you will, how it gets big, it stays activated 
as I have it selected. So it kind of creates this, you know, like you're picking it up effect almost, right? And then when I set it down, it shrinks. So it shrinks into it. It's like picking up and putting it down. But let's see what happens when I put it on one of these. See how it shakes? It's giving me kind of a visual indicator that it's putting it in the wrong spot, right? We'll put it here and then it's good. All right, and let's do one more. So we have that first one. Do the same thing here. I'm gonna add an emphasis animation and we're gonna have it grow and shrink, right? And let's adjust the trigger. So emphasize drag item two using grow. When mouse is hovered over, drag item two, easy peasy. We'll add a second emphasis animation. And uh, this time, I don't know if teeter would work. Mm, we'll give it a try. We'll try teeter and we're gonna have it to high, and we also have an option for direction. We can make it teeter to the left or teeter to the right. We'll have it teeter to the left. I think it's probably gonna look weird because it's a round object, but you know, we'll give it a try. We're gonna have a teeter, and we're gonna say, we're gonna edit this one, and we're gonna say emphasize drag item two using the teeter when the user uh, doesn't click on it, but when they, when item is dropped on, Drag item two is dropped on. In this case, we're gonna do drop targets one, three, and four, right? Okay, cool. Let's give it a preview, see what that looks like. All right, so here's this. And if I put it here, it shrinks, good. And if I drag it over here, it kind of teeters. So it kind of does the thing, you know? It would probably work with uh, a less symmetrical object, but you kind of get the point here. I put this here, it shakes, and that's a great example of combining multiple emphasis animations to make something that's interactive even more interactive. All right, so that's an overview of how to use the emphasis animations in Articulate Storyline. So I wanna know, what ideas do you have for using the emphasis animations in Storyline? Share your tips, ideas, or questions by commenting down below. Otherwise, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and bell button down below to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, make sure to join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy with the link down below, where we focus on helping new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.